Hi, Internet. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about character sheets. And what I like to do is a little different. And I think, um, um, I guess everyone does things differently, but this is what I like to do. It makes it a little easier for gameplay and it's a little more fun. So I'm going to show you three different types of um, means of keeping track of characters. Um, one's for um, Source of Wizardry Complete, one's for White Box, the other one's for White Star. So click on the, um, once again, go to drduick.com, click on the Casahedron, and I'm going to go through um, my different ways of doing character sheets. So here is um, several different character sheets. I'm going to show you what, what's available and then what I am doing. So here's the Swords and Wizardry Google Sheet. I, uh, it's available for you if you can just click this, make a copy of it, and then you can do stuff. Um, and this is interesting if you're going to play an online game, you go back and forth. I know Roll20 has a great character sheet online for doing things. If that's what you like to use, that's great. I've used it. I, I like that one on Roll20. It works perfectly fine. This is the one, official one that's in the book, uh, Source of Wizardry Character Sheet. Um, if, you, if you like that, um, I think it's great. It works. Like I said, for some reason, I always change things because I try to make it simpler and simpler and simpler as I go. Another one is I use the actual, here's a spell sheet that can be used for each thing. You write down what spells you're using for each level. And obviously, I hear you have scrolls and you have obviously stats if you want. And like I said, these are all things you could print out. This is a, uh, a boy I was working with. He um, was in one of my gaming groups. He came up with his own version of a Swords of Wizardry sheet. And I really liked it. He put a lot of thought into it, a lot of time. And he came up with this thing. Look at this. It's uh, beautifully done. I told him I put it up there because um, this is what he liked to use. It's all a matter of what you like to use and what you're familiar with. He's a very analytical kid. I guess he was 13 or 14 at the time when I was playing with him. Uh, my sons were in a gaming group with him, and he came out with this, and this is what he liked. And they, you can see it has everything kind of set up. It looks almost, I, it looks more like an advanced D&D game sheet than anything I've, I've seen, right? Um, the other one is, um, I, uh, I use no cards when I put character sheets together. I, I tend to use this as my method, and I'll explain why in a second, because sometimes characters die, and you want to have things easy to go for the next one. And for this thing, this is, I have a different type of note card for each type of character you have. This is the magic user, a mage character sheet right here. And it's a note card. These, you print these out, you cut them out, and use them like a glue stick and put on a four by six note card, and you're ready to go. This is where it becomes easy. You have your spell levels on the back. If they get more spells, you get another note card. Just keep filling it out. But this part, like they just circle their components they're going to have and it keeps them from trying to remember, do I need this? Do I need that? This is all written down. They can put other stuff down there if they want. Uh, I tend to have my uh, magic users the ability to throw darts. You can throw three around. They can carry up to 10 of them. That's what's here. So they can go chucking these things like little throwing stars or throwing knives or whatever it is. Um, and they could circle whatever weapon they're going to have, a staff dagger, or use darts. Sometimes I let them use more than one depending on what the occasion is. And then you have your other stuff. This makes it fairly simple. This is the magic user. Here's the druid. Once again, the front card looks about the same, right? Except what did you lose? You lost the uh, spell level type stuff because you don't need that for the druid. So I just took it out, give it more space. And the druid has its things right here. Uh, once again, it's able to use all these different things, right? And it can throw darts if it wants to. It does have a sling and it could throw stones. This is according to Swords and Wizardry. So that's why I have this thing set up the way it is. And it tells leather armor and a wooden shield if it wants. And we use Ascending Armor class, makes it easier. And other stuff that they're uh, interested in having. And you write down the spells, right? Very quick way of doing things. Uh, then you have the Thief and Assassin. I say they're both on the same card because they're going to use this kind of a sheet on the back of it. And I Another video I explained my general thieving skills table where I do things a little different with a D20. Once again, here's all the stuff. They're not gonna have anything more in leather armor and they're not gonna use shields, but it has all the things that they're gonna have for. And obviously they can make these as far as melee weapons and this information down here. Now, for example, um, 
if you have a uh, assassin could use an arrow or a bow so you would actually write that one in and obviously that would be bows i mean the arrows right here would be kept track of so what people could do and i could show you another thing in another video but you you, you basically just shade in the circles as you use up your equipment and make it so you can erase them all and then go back again so dark them in too much because you would want to use it again and again there's actually some space left here to put more stuff if you need it but this is your basic character sheet for the fighter ranger and the paladin uh it's pretty much set up once again you don't need that little spot for finding out spells and then you have what's got arrows and bolts class abilities if you have it like some like the, obviously the ranger has bonuses against giants and stuff like that you would write that stuff in here but their general equipment would be here and once again um all the other stuff that you circle the one you're going to have and it just makes it easier if you lose it you break your bow you just uncircle it once you get something else you circle it, it makes it super super easy all the stuff fits on a four by six new card and the last one being clerics they're um their setups about the same except you um it looks kind of like the fighter, but you also get a section just put their spells. Like I said, this is for Swords and Wizardry complete. This is what I use for this group. Now, for White Box, I'm going to click back and um, go to White Box. I have White Box uh, character sheet looks like this. And um, this is from, uh, I guess this would be fantastic medieval adventure games. Um, this is the Heartbound, which actually has the black and white cover I really like. The other one has a red cover with the dragon. I have those that I use for those. This, I try to make it real simple. If you think about it, I have um, pack A and pack B is written in the PDF, and they can circle the one that they want to use, and they use 50 gold pieces, and for the rest of it, they, um, and it, it tells you how to find out how many gift pluses. It's, you know, 3D6 times 10 uh, for doing this. Sometimes I let them roll all, like, 1D4, 1D6, 1D8, 1D... 10, 1D, 12, add those up, multiple by 10, give them more money sometimes to see what they come up with. Sometimes it ends up being less money. I don't think it ever gets really past 210 gold pieces. No one ever got more than that. There's different ways you can do this, obviously, depending on what you're interested in. But this is a straightforward kind of thing. Helmets, what I've done with helmets, you can buy a helmet. I always say it saves you from a critical hit. And then the helmet's ruined, you throw it away, you gotta get a new helmet. So um, I, that's something I like to do. To put it in a note card format because I like the note card because I could store a whole bunch of them in a box. Um, rubber banded together for each character group. Uh, character name, player name, a white box. I do penalties, or and and you can write additional stuff in these little squares right here. So I make them write down their score, whether it's plus or minus. You get something, and are both penalties. I like to run white box a little hotter. Like I said, like that, give it a little more of a bonus. So if you go a 17 or 18 right um i believe it's a plus two uh 13 through 16 is plus one and this is kind of how i like to run things when you're doing things and sometimes i do um how would you say i consider it the um difficulty checks based on 10 15 and 20 so this is a mild difficulty check if you have uh this and you're gonna roll a plus two and you have to roll a d20 60% of the time you will be successful. This is just numbers I've worked out, right? So this is a fun way of looking at it. The, the other card, the back card looks like this. Pretty straightforward. And you only have, need one card for white box. That's why I like to play it. They're all the same and you just kind of add these things as you go. So um, magic users, you would actually just write your spells in here and uh, you circle the pack. It's worth 50 gold pieces. Once again, I, I took it from what you saw from that one sheet to make it a little easier. If you have arrows or bullets, you could do this. But if you say you're using darts, you would cancel a bunch of these things out and just use, okay, I'm using, you know, if you're using darts in the game, I don't think it's actually in the game, but if you wanted to use games, you can actually say, okay, I have 12 of these throwing darts magic user can throw. Once again, uh, it's a fun game. It's another way to do it. So I'm going to show you the white star sheet. White star, um, if you click on this guy, white star has a whole bunch in here, right? And here's my, these have different character sheets for each one of them. And the character sheets are nice because if you click on a character sheet for pilot, like Jay Bond did, these are great. It tells you all the things you can do with this stuff, your ammo and all these things that you can print out. It has a nice little graphic of the dude, you know what I'm saying? And I like it a lot. 
like here's um like i said the the only thing about it is like uh specific character sheets like if you have a stack of them and everybody wants to be they tend to take up a lot of i, I don't know why they seem to take up room for me but they also run into the problem of uh how would you say use up all your mercenary sheets and you have pilot sheets but you don't have another mercenary street. How do you? So sometimes I don't like them when they're real specific like that. I think they've um, they have like a, a general one. This is a general character sheet that's blank right here, and you write down your own stuff. So that's kind of nice, and it kind of keeps the whole theme. Um, you have all these different guys for doing it, and you can see that, uh, like I said, James Bond did a wonderful job. Once again, I'm into no cards because they're easy to store. I just wrap them all together with a, a rubber band to keep them together. So this is my white star character. It looks just like the white box pretty much. And once again, I have the probability of making a DC check. Now this is just me. Now everyone does it differently. So sometimes with this group in particular, we've always done DC checks instead of doing like roll under stats, you have to beat a 10 and you get a plus two because your strength is 17, 18. They also have skills in this game, which change things quite a bit. Because if you're doing skills, your skills are going to uh, change the way this is what's skills. If you have a athletic skill, then you would get a plus one or plus two. So that's the reason why this is set up a little different. Um, but then the other end of the car is your gear and your weapons and you get different energy cells. And obviously I have just pictures of things just for fun so they can write things down. But uh, it's a, like I said, I like no cards, they make it much easier for me to put them together and bind them to play the game. So. This pretty much covers up a bunch. Um, starts without number. Uh, I played the game. I like it. I, 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 it was a hard sell for some of my gaming groups. And the reason why is because they just, for some reason, just, I don't know. Uh, I think it's the amount of, I can see that. I can see clearly the, um, I guess I should rotate this, but I don't even feel like showing it, but they have a lot that's going on. I like the skill checks, but I think it's for, for new players. It was, they didn't, they didn't like it for the allure. I mean, they got it, but they didn't like it. Other dust, you know, that's another one that has been playing. Um, something to take into consideration. You have to, what does your group really like? If, if I'm, I'm trying to sell it too much, this I'm not having to sell white, white star. They're loving it. So I just, that's one we're going to use. Right. Once again, I thank you for viewing, and uh, hopefully this has been kind of interesting. Like, if you want to come here and click on my stuff and take this stuff as a PDF file, take it and use it, be my guest. It's a lot of fun that way. And um, it's cool because the internet set up that way that you can come up with a good idea, and a good idea doesn't really give a damn where it came from. With that, you have a good day.